from LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight, presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. <laughs> Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Anna Trillo, and Sandstorm is my favorite song. <laughs> that was Mark Wadmichael's Instagram story after the game. Make sure you follow our guy, Bully. And I'm Keith Farmer. Kentucky is 4-0 and and sitting atop the SEC standings. Feels like a good day to be a cat on Monday evening. It sure does. Now, Kentucky went on the road, and they handled their first true road test in their new system. The defense stepped up, and Kentucky leaned on the run game to beat South Carolina and Columbia on Saturday. That's tonight's big blue story as Kentucky started the game off with a 12-play, 75-yard drive that ended with Bossier Smoke scoring from 15 yards out. But after that, the offense stuttered, punting on the next three drives, and then a Will Levis interception on an underthrown deep shot to Wondell Robinson. The defense was stout all night, though, and did not allow any first half points. Kentucky went into the locker room up 10 0. The defense put up just a dominant performance, even when they were put in a bad position by the offense turning the ball over. Brad White's unit only allowed one South Carolina drive to reach the end zone all night. Matt Ruffalo made all three field goals, and the Cats win it. 16 to 10. Anna, how'd you feel after that first big road test? I felt relieved. I felt glad to see the defense back to their old tricks, and I felt a little bewildered over the turnover margin, mm -hmm. which we'll get to right here. Yeah. Turnover still an issue for the Cats, now sitting at a staggering negative nine in the turnover margin for the season. Will Levis threw his fifth interception. Josh Ali fumbled the ball twice, and Chris Rodriguez fumbled two more times. Kentucky didn't lose all of those, though. Shout out to Eli Cox. <laughs> but you can't keep winning games, especially the next three on the schedule, giving the ball away like that. Here's Levis and Stoops after the game. It goes to show just how much potential we have left with this team. And it's something that I need to take responsibility of as being the quarterback and um, plan it into the minds of everyone on the offense. Every practice here coming up. And um, obviously with the interceptions, uh, that just can't happen. Uh, need to be making better decisions, throwing better balls. But um, something that if we get fixed and when we get fixed, um, we're going to be start playing a lot better ball games. Anytime you're going on the road in this league, you, you know, we talk about it. You're going to face some adversity and you can't flinch. You've got to buck up, buck up and play the next play. And they certainly did that. So overall, very, very uh, pleased with the victory. We will look at the film and certainly uh, get better. Keith, C-Rod had some ball security issues as a freshman, but until this season had not lost the ball in a long time. And Levis's interceptions, really only a couple have been on bad throws. Yeah, the good thing is he's not putting them in a really, that, that one right there, mm -hmm. that was deep in South Carolina's own right. territory. You'd like to continue the drive, but at least it was deep there and didn't put him in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. Now, fumbles aside, Chris Rodriguez has been the best running back in the SEC. No one has had an answer for him. He's leading the SEC in rushing yards with 520. That's an average of 130 yards per game. He went for 144 on Saturday, and he's averaging over six yards a carry, so he's also been really efficient as a runner. He's run for three scores so far this season and caught one as well. Liam Cohen said preseason he wanted to get C-Rod 25 touches a game. Well, he's close. He's getting 22. And a lot of those touches are coming in the fourth quarter where it's no surprise that Stoops is leaning on his main man to close out games. In the fourth quarter, Rodriguez has just been a punishing force for Kentucky's offense. He has more carries in the fourth than any other quarter and has rushed for nearly 200 yards in the last period alone. And he's averaging eight yards a carry. That's almost a first down, Keith. Mm, so yeah. he's just getting stronger as the game goes along. Defenses are probably pretty sick of tackling him. Here's Stoops after the game on his star running back. I can't make an excuse for him. That, that, that's just not, it's not acceptable. He's played too much football for us to do that. And we rely on him too much. And at the end of the game, I wanted him back in there. And I count on him. And he, he once again iced the game by getting tough yards. When everybody in the stadium knew we were running the ball, he got a first down and iced the game. And, uh, you know, we will, the only thing I can say is we can't make an excuse. We've got to look at everything 
and go back to work and, and get it corrected. Coach Stoops obviously not happy about putting the ball on the ground, but it's clear he trusts Chris to be the guy down the stretch who wins games for Kentucky, and Keith, he's earned it. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, Cats are coming back home for one of the biggest games that we can remember. The Florida Gators coming to town Saturday night. Florida 3-1 and one with one loss coming to Alabama, so that's in the league. If you're looking for tickets to the game, good luck. <laughs> this morning it was already nearing a sellout at Kroger Field. The game is at 6 o'clock. It'll be on ESPN, and here's what Coach Stoop said today about the game. Preparing for a really talented Florida team. Uh, Dan Mullen calling the plays offensively, always is a great play caller, uh, very talented players as usual, very physical run game, rushing for over 300 yards a game is, is extremely impressive. And then uh, defensively with Todd Grantham, does a wonderful job, Very a uh, lot of respect for Todd and his defensive philosophies and the way they play. Uh, very, very long athletic defensive group. So uh, all in all, very good team and it'll be a great challenge and really looking forward to having a great home atmosphere here this weekend. All right, so besides just showing up for the game, Saturday's game is a big one, so listen up. Blue white theme is in order, so make sure to check your seats. Make sure you wear the right color at Kroger Field on Saturday. Anna Cats are facing a few levels up in competition this Saturday. They sure are. It's not Chattanooga. I think this is the mm -hmm. first ranked team Kentucky's taken on this year, and they're in the top 10. Mm -hmm. So the atmosphere should be amazing. It's the first time since 2007 that Kentucky and Florida will be a ranked matchup, with the Cats showing up in the polls for the first time this season. The USA Today coaches poll has Kentucky 23rd and the Gators ranked 9th. Now, Kentucky hasn't cracked the AP top 25 yet, but they're still in the others receiving votes column. All right, we also sent one of our own in enemy territory this weekend. That's right. We made <laughs> Eli Gain listen to Sandstorm on repeat Poor on Eli. Saturday night and the Rooster Crows. <laughs> <laughs> His report from the field at Williams Bryce Stadium is next only on BBN Tonight.